Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Awaken the Spirits. Yeah! The Resident Evil franchise has dominated media platforms with its heart-pounding video games and terrifying film adaptions. Resident Evil Village launched earlier this year, taking gamers to a mysterious European village where unspeakable horrors lie in wait. Today, several cast members from Resident Evil Village join us to discuss how they brought their characters to life for the new game. Please welcome to the stage Creepy Kingdom's James H. Carter II. Hey, what's up? How's everyone doing? Wow, there's a lot of you out here, but we're gonna have a good time talking about Resident Evil Village. Yeah! All right. Let's get our illustrious panel out here. Let's start off with Katie O'Hagan, the voice of Mia Winters. Yeah! Come on down. There, you got it. Ready! Away! Just in case you didn't know, you need to stay away. <laughs> Coming next to the stage, Becca Pre with the voice of Bella Daly Dries. And the motion capture performance of Donna Benevito. Andy Norris! Yeah. Come on down! All right, we are spread out here, socially distanced, <laughs> ready to chat. Hey, everybody! <laughs> All right, well, I gotta start off this whole part by congratulating everyone involved with Resident Evil Village on 4.5 million units sold. Let's hear a round of applause for that worldwide. Thank you guys! Imagine that many, uh, you know, discs in a room. That would fill up this whole room. Or don't imagine. That is quite a lot. <laughs> Trapped in the fist. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I'm going to start with a question that I want to know right away from everyone on the panel. We can go one by one here. Is, have you played the game solo in the dark with surround sound on? <laughs> Uh, you think we're crazy? <laughs> that is a very specific question. Yes, I, I told you it was one specifically that I had. I'm just, Andy? Um, I have played it solo. Well, do you count being on Twitch solo? Because I was alone in the room. Uh, yeah, yeah, just as long as you're alone in the room. Yeah. We'll and, give it to you. it was in the dark. Um, I had to have a light because otherwise you can't see me on Twitch. But uh, I did not have surround sound. So, I got two out of three. Okay, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. I think she Andy's gonna win. I think she beat the best <laughs> rest of us for sure. Solo, yes. I actually was in the, no, I wasn't solo. I told you, I was in the dark. And okay. I don't think I had surround sound, but I had my mod, Adrian Jordan, there because I'm terrible. And whenever I like, I just kept dying and dying and dying. So I'm like, here, get me to the next part. <laughs> I want to see the rest of the game in this century. How many times? <laughs> Shout out to Adrian. <laughs> How many times did you kill yourself? I can't tell. Well, I mean, well, killed Bela? Yeah. Oh, well, you know. No, no, no. How many times did Bela kill you? Oh, just the one. I, I, one she knows who I am. So <laughs> <laughs> You guys, you have me beat, so I have not actually played Village yet. I'm holding really? on. Really? I, I am starting with seven. Can we have the gas? <gasps> I know. <gasps> I'm sorry. I had to start with seven first. Um, you know, I got to make sure I understand the story. Yeah, you still want to jump in. I, I don't want to jump in and be confused. Right, that's true. Uh, so I just started seven in VR, which... Ooh, VR, wow. Exactly. <laughs> The, yeah. That so, kind of trumps the surround sound in the dark. Oh, I mean. <laughs> yeah. I basically got to the part where I 
crawl up the stairs and I scared the crap out of myself. <laughs> and I remember shooting the scene. Very, very specific. Yeah. And I still got there and I, I, I knew it was dark. I heard the growling and the... Mm. And I knew she was coming. And it still... I threw the remote, I fell to the ground and I haven't played it since. So... But in your defense, it has been... Games take a while. They Two do. years for a village to come out, right? So that was like, what, four years ago? For 2017. Yeah. So it's been yeah. a while. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm getting there, and I promise as soon as I get through seven, I'm getting to village. I'm very, very excited. Mainly because of these ladies. Um, the, the, yeah, yeah, yes, thank you. Yeah. Yes. The Lords. I'm so excited for the Lords uh, throughout all of village. So I'm pumped to get to that at nice. some point. It, I will have the lights on, though. <laughs> well, I've learned my lesson. Anytime you breathe like that, I tell you it scares us all, no matter what. <laughs> right? That's true. That's definitely well, true. What did you say? I said that's true. Um, and I am also, sh don't tell Katie this, but when she plays Village, I'm going to sneak up from behind and just scare her when she does it. <laughs> but shh, it's our secret king. And I think I'll show up with my scythe. <laughs> And just be like behind her. Wow, that's like locking better. all my doors. <laughs> well, that's way better than surround sound. Yeah. <laughs> Katie, you thought they didn't have Village in VR, but now they do. <laughs> uh, so, Becky and Andy, what, what was the part that scared you the most when you played Village? Just the ability to not die was scary enough. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> There was no way out, is what you're saying. Seriously, I'm just getting to the next level. Um, it scared me the most. I mean, seeing Mama as a dragon, that was pretty dope. Uh, it was it was a little scary to me, because I mean, I, just, I know Maggie so well, that it was just like, cool. That's awesome. But like, the lichens were freaking me out, because they just would just appear all the time out of nowhere, and that was enough to scare me, just from the very beginning. Little Jimmy. Yes. Oh boy. <laughs> Jimmy is, that's my, my loving nickname for the guard fetus in oh. House Benaviento. <laughs> Definitely the scariest part. Yeah. Yeah, I just, when I was playing it and I hid in one of the cabinets in the laboratory, I was just, I was just screaming, Calm down, little Jimmy, it's okay! I'll get you past the fire, it's okay! I think Angie scares me too. I think it's because of Chucky. Yeah. Like, oh, Chucky yeah. has messed me up for life. And so when Paula does Angie, I'm just like, it's her again. <laughs> and that little waddle she does as Angie, her little like side waddle. <laughs> what was that again? <laughs> do it again, do it again. Do Nobody again. can quite do it like Paula. So. <laughs> you only get you only get to see it once from me. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh. Everyone cherish that moment you just got. <laughs> Recording? <laughs> we have we have evidence. Huh? This is being recorded? Yeah. Uh. yeah I see some cameras out there. <laughs> uh, so um, all of you have spent time uh, in front of the camera and behind the scenes. Uh, I'd like to know which do you prefer. Uh, you can start back up. Okay. <laughs> wow, that's really hard. Uh, I love, love, love voiceover. Um, I can go in my high tops and my tank tops and my no makeup and a ponytail and totally get away with Just it. Roll out of and it's totally fine. <laughs> Everyone was like, great, she's here. No makeup. Right, love, 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 love. <laughs> uh, one of the only good things about the mask, you know, is you don't have to wear makeup. <laughs> it's great. Um, but I'm a performance person and I'm a very physically active person. I mean, I mean, I'm supposed to be active, I should look over here when I say that. But um, she's looking out queen. But um, I, yeah, I love being physical with my work and getting my whole like face and body and voice and everything combined into it. Um, so I would definitely say PCAP, performance capture, because it allows me to do a full performance. Um, I, I, I love playing with my voice and doing different characters and you know and dialects and just like ages and but when you can get your whole body like for example when I did the man's blood right I, I didn't really know what I was gonna do until I was actually doing it like I was like to into it which oh, I wouldn't nice. have like planned I just kind of <laughs> my body just went there right so I love being able to kind of emote with my body and be able to take it places you know if we're talking about taking your body places then let's go over here <laughs> yeah, all right. 
this creature over here. Okay. She's amazing. Like the way she's sitting. My body sitting. goes everywhere that I go. Just look. Look how she's sitting in the chair. Would you normally think to sit in the chair like that? She's I'd actually, break actually, something I heard if I tried that. Thing, but I won't really? get into that. Yeah. I guess um, I'm the wrong generation. <laughs> I guess we. Well, you're in the skirts. So you have an out. I'd still do it. I would just. I would end up falling back exactly. or something. And it would not be good. <laughs> Um, okay, so so the question, which do we prefer? Uh, I primarily work in motion capture. It's it's been. Mm, I mean, I do I do a little bit in film, but um, my career has mostly gone into motion capture, specifically creature work. Uh, but I don't have a preference per se. The one thing I do really like about motion capture is because you don't have like lighting setups or makeup or anything like that. It moves very quickly, so you can get a lot done in a day, um, which is always kind of exciting. You're not you're not sitting for someone to like change the lights right. around or set up for another shot. Um, you get to keep the momentum going, which is super cool. Versus on a set, if you don't know, it's like oh, last looks. Okay, Katie has a hair out of place. Katie still has a hair out of place. Why me? Get that hair out of Katie's face, please. Okay, last look. Oh wait, I think Andy's jacket needs a little no, a little bit to the left. Well, okay, wait, that light's not right. Could you fix the light? No, no, I, I, wow. no, no, it's a different color. No, 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 we need a different color temperature, so it takes a longer. <laughs> also, <laughs> I never want to do a, a movie where, where Becca's directing now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm worried about my hair being out of place. <laughs> hey, I perfectly said Katie's hair. <laughs> yeah, I actually have done AD. I've actually done behind the scenes with production work. Um, first AD, second AD, wardrobe, casting. Um, definitely prefer the performance aspect, but all of it is just brilliant to be able to be a part of the film work in general and performance work. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of very similar to everybody. Uh, on the behind the scenes side, the most that I've really done is more makeup. I okay. have a love for effects makeup, Halloween, that's why this con is Woo! Amazing. Yeah, this year for Halloween, yeah. Yes. Don't be shy. <laughs> I was like, Halloween is my everything. So it's all of um, our everything. I do, I do love, love, love makeup. Um, but that is my second passion because acting is definitely the first. Um, I love being in front of the camera. But the biggest thing is with motion capture. I started acting because of theater. Oh, okay. And then I switched yes. and started doing film and television. And then after you know, I think maybe nine years in LA is when Resident Evil came to me and I learned about video games, I learned about motion capture, I learned about voiceover. I knew none of this. I knew none wow. of the world. Resident Evil 7 was the first thing I ever did. And after doing that, it showed such a new side because in my mind, it took my love of theater and my love of film and television and it melded it into one. So when you're doing performance capture for a video game, when you get lucky enough to be cast as not just the voice, but also the motion capture, the facial capture, where you get to do a little bit of everything. Yeah. It literally melds every side of acting into like one form. And you get to become such a child because you have to use your imagination so much more when right. you're doing motion capture because you are on an empty stage with PVC pipes and boxes yeah. and tennis balls and you're being told this is a lichen, this is a ship that's being destroyed. <laughs> um, like you are literally given nothing and they're just like, okay, go. Have fun. <laughs> Which is like so much fun though because it it's is. like you get to unleash that. You said inner child. Like I started out in theater as well. Yeah. And that's a great analogy, Katie, because it's probably the closest thing I have to theater and it takes it to the next level. Because yeah. um, in theater, it, it, what's really cool about performance cap is you can be something totally different than you actually are. Like a lot of times in film or television or in commercial work, you, you know, they typecast you based on your look. I'm typecast as a monkey. <laughs> I get a zombie a lot. What is this? What do you mean type? Yeah, yeah I don't get this. I, what's so cool about this is I don't get that, but I can play. I can play a fairy. I can play a zombie or a monkey now. I can play a witch, a warlock. I can play, a you know, a, I can play a vampire. <laughs> I can play, you know, a giraffe. I can play literally. What does a giraffe sound like? Wait, yeah, that, what does a giraffe that, sound that, like? That, that, Who's got fan art? I want fan art of Becca as a giraffe. Yes! <laughs> Excuse me, my oh, water no, bottle is leaking. There, there it is, there it is, nice and long. Oh, that's just ignore the thing. I hear this down here because you have to ignore the little wet stains. I'm not going to hear it.
Not here yeah. first. I did not leak. It was my bottle. <laughs> She's like, turn off the cameras. Turn it off. <laughs> I won't turn around because that would be just too much for your enjoyment. <laughs> oh, but now the whole chair is wet. Okay. <laughs> It's all part of the show, folks. It's all part of the show. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so what's really great is that we can play roles that we normally wouldn't play based on our look. Oh, you can't play that because you look like this. Right. But now we can play whatever. Just because the world of make believe, the world of CG, you know, is wonderful. Well, that kind of ties into another question I had: is the, uh, when you do the motion capture work or or you're in a sound booth, it's it's a pretty non-creepy environment. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm like, until you bring us in. Yeah. <laughs> until you hear that voice of Katie's and then you're like, oh. and then, until she shows up and then it gets creepy. No, but it's but when you're playing the games, the, the environments themselves are so just disturbing, creepy, and it's like, uh, how do you guys get in the zone for uh, doing those performances that are gonna be in a creepy environment when they're done? I mean, I know for me, I can only talk about RE. Those are the only games that I have done thus far. And so with those, what's nice is yes, you're on that stage that's pretty blank and you're given these general things to let you know where you can move, where the scene takes place, where the couch is, right. <laughs> like all that kind of stuff. But a lot of times they do give you a heads up. Um, they'll either have um, artwork or they'll have sketches or they okay. will have a little bit um, of the world that they would, will bring up like on a screen. So you can kind of get an idea of how dark or dingy or um, you know if there's mold or goo or, or like what you're kind of going through. Uh, so you have a general idea. Right. But then at the same time, there are many a scenes I shot without knowing that, and then when the game came out, I was like, oh. You're like, oh, I'm there, huh? No wonder they were like, so just lay on the ground and act like you're puking up mold. <laughs> you know how to do that, right? So you kind of get an idea <laughs> when they hand you a chainsaw and say, you're going to chop your husband's hand off. So, I have the way she brings that like everywhere she goes now. <laughs> Ethan says hi everyone. It's like Thing from the Adam's Family. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> no, but I, I know that was my experience with that. I, I would get some little things, but just within the script, reading what the scene is, you, your mind just goes there. Okay. Wait, you're seeing the she darkness. Got the script? I didn't get the I script. script. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Okay, better. You've never actually got the whole script. <laughs> Ever. At any point in time. Like, really? we did a table Ever. read. Literally, it was, we were, he showed up, and he had some um, manila envelopes, and they were just our scene. So, stay on my page 23 is my first page. I don't have page 1 through 22. So, people are talking. I'm like, I wonder who she is. I wonder what her name is. Who's that? <laughs> you know that is? And then you're like, stop talking. Then I was talking. Oh, was it my turn? Like, I see you oh, going to see that? Oh, cool. <laughs> I didn't know I was a, a, wit, a vampire. I thought it was a witch. When I was cast, I was told I was you were the lead witch. I'm like, witch? Okay, cool. And then I'm like, mm, man blood. That sounds like a vampire thing. <laughs> oh, a vampire! <laughs> really did not know. <laughs> um, more or less what, what they both said. You know, you kind of, you do get, you do get usually some indication of what the world looks like, what the art looks like. You kind of get a tone for it. Um, I didn't do this on Resident Evil, but on other games I've worked on, we've used music. Like, I'll bring in, oh, that's cool. like, scores from similar games if I have an idea of what it looks like, so that I can kind of stay. Because often, and again, this didn't happen with me on Resident Evil, but often you are, like, the only person on set, too. So yeah, that can I had a lot of scenes where it's just yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like that's Not trippy because for the, yeah, like both games, it was I was only with one other person because of COVID. Before COVID, like every time we shot stuff, I was like lots of people. Yeah, it's <laughs> so nice. I had Todd um, and my sisters and mother um, for the iconic beginning scene, right. but everything else I shot. Todd wasn't there for, so it was just me acting to a, a wall. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, COVID. I asked you before COVID. Oh, <laughs> that was just, you know, like, you can do this, right? Imagination. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, I see was, Todd there. I was going to say, probably the craziest thing out of, that came out of eight 
um, and because of uh, COVID and the pandemic, was I did not meet these ladies until after the game was Rat completed party. and out. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that part. I many, pretty much met everybody. There were that. many of the actors who we just either didn't have scenes with each other or because of COVID, they really started restricting things. So when we were finally able to shoot, it became, okay, just you two, just you two. Right. So they really separated things. So it wasn't until literally the release of the game, I finally got to meet my cast. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I think Andy and I met. Is the callback or the actual first audition? We met the callback. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, she seems cool. What's your name? Because you know? we uh, we auditioned for the sisters together. Yeah. So it was definitely fun. Like, and the fact that bravo to casting on Resident Evil Village because the whole cast is phenomenal and we all get along really well and I know many of you have seen us online and we actually are friends and we do like hanging out and most of us and didn't Katie meet did drag me to Shark Week. Shark Week! <laughs> yeah, usually that kind of camaraderie uh, is built on set. Yeah, it's also like theater, honestly. Yeah. Like that's the best community I've had until RE. So it's been a really cool experience in that aspect of all these new actors and new friends that I've met who I technically didn't even work with. <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of working together now. Now we are. Now, now, we're now it's together. great. <laughs> right? <laughs> cool, cool. All right, so back, back to Village. What was a uh, favorite scene to do? I'll start with Kate. Oh, with me? Yeah. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> um, it's really tough. Mia's very different in eight, which was kind of cool. Um, in, you know, in seven, she's got that crazy, normal, possessed thing going on. And in, se in eight, she becomes very motherly. Um, very much so meant for family, and that's all she really cares about. So I was very excited to show that side of her. Uh, and honestly, I only got the first scene when when they told me she was alive and coming back. They sent me the first scene. Okay. That the, scene, the first scene of the game. The first scene of the game. Yeah. That scene, she get, that was in the trailer. She gets blown to bits. Yeah. yeah. I did not know <laughs> that I was not blown to bits. Really? I came to work that day and was kind of bummed. I was excited and I was talking to Todd and. I was like, oh, I'm so happy Mia's back, but I'm really sad that they're killing her off right away. And he looked at me and goes, oh, you don't know. <laughs> I was like, what don't I know? <laughs> Wait a minute. And he's just like, that's not you. Oh, spoiler. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> hold your ears. Spoiler if alert. If you haven't played Village, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so he was like, yeah, that's not you. And I, my face just dropped. I'm like, oh. what do you mean? Because I missed the table read. So oh. I did not know that Mia was actually going to come back. So ultimately, <laughs> I didn't realize what would become my favorite scene uh, was actually when Chris finds Mia mm. in the trapped and finds the real Mia. I love shooting that scene because there was something about the vulnerability of it. You don't usually get to see that side of Mia and you got to see this very vulnerable and she also, um, the love of her family and the anger towards Chris and BSAA for saying they would protect them and they didn't. Right. So being able to act like that with a big dude, anytime you work with a big dude, you get to like just yell at him and push him and right. it's always fun. Awesome. It's always fun. So that was, I really, really liked um, doing that scene. It was just such a different side of her. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> Becca? You know, nailing Todd with my scythe. <laughs> Turns out I really like weapons, apparently. Um, as, as Becca likes weapons, apparently. Um, yeah, it's, it was fun. Todd's a sweetheart. He's an absolute sweetheart, and such a good sport. I mean, we put him through so much, right? <laughs> During that, I mean, his poor hands. His hands um, all the time. I feel like Todd put me through a lot. <laughs> That's true. Your experience was like. I'm like, Donna needs some redemption. You broke into my house. You broke into my house and killed me. I didn't do anything. This is, I know. It's a beautiful Justice for Donna. For Donna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, you're the big one. Hey. Um, but yeah, it was fun, fun for me to like to do the big reveal where we all, you know, show up giggling and laughing and you know at, at Ethan and then being able to go after him and side him and 
pulled him into me. It was a fun, it was fun to choreograph that with yeah. him because he was actually on um, kind of like a little platform with little wheels at the bottom. And so, because I actually had to hit him, hook, okay, so you have to hook my psych through a loop, make it into the loop, which was right here. Oh boy. <laughs> Every man here just kind of went, what? Like, oh boy. Right? And then hook it and then yank it back and then drag him, right? And so I was actually dragging him and he's a little bit bigger than me. So we put him on that board with wheels so I could actually do it. Um, and uh, so that was just fun. It was fun. To, we had trouble with the site because the first site they brought, if you've heard my interviews, you've probably heard this. The boy, they brought the site that, that was foam. It was like a big Nerf foam. It was like wiggly. So I was like, ah! Another one, it was kind of like, it was stiffer but not great. And so the last one was plastic, but hard plastic. And so it was allowed me to actually hook him. Oh. But I, of course, I, I mean, you do it a lot, so eventually I did hit him. <laughs> I was like, ah! So he, he, he was great. I, I kept going. I feel like I purposely did it. And I was like, oh my god, I just yelled, I'm going. And that's a good point to take that use was when I actually hit him. He was like wincing in pain, and I just, Capped at and afterward, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. He's like, it's okay. And he's like, don't worry, I already had my kids, I guess. <laughs> <We're not laughs> but it was just it was just fun. It was fun working with him. He's such a pro and so sweet and I had the grace, you know, as I was messing up with him when I hit him. And it was just it's fun honestly it's fun to play villains. Um, I you know, I get cast I guess as both sides and um, I, I think I'm a decently nice person, so it's fun to not be nice sometimes and not get in trouble for it. <laughs> um, I, I don't know, I think I can say this about myself, and I'm guessing it might be true about the two of you. Some roles are what's, what my coach used to call in our wheelhouse so that you can naturally go into, and some require a lot of like time and training and research and like, you know, you know what goes behind that and what's, you know, for every character I do, I create a backstory, regardless if it comes naturally to me or not, um, to try to figure out who that person is and make her tangible and real and, and, and have a connection to her. Um, but some girls that are in our wheelhouse are just easier to go into, and I feel like crazy is easy for you. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say my husband would probably agree with that. <laughs> And I, crazy. <laughs> and I feel like with you, just every monkey. form of creature, monkey, <laughs> I was gonna say any kind of like animals, any animal, animal monster, creature, creature, that your body naturally goes <laughs> into it. And the same way with kind of like bad, you know, like vixen villains. Like for me, it's just it's something I can naturally go into, and it was just fun to be able to play with that and you know be arrested for it. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what we're all here to do? Just to do crazy things and not get arrested for it. <laughs> what about you, Andy? Um, I think my favorite scene was the scene with all of the lords. Um, because I was super fortunate. I mostly just sat in a chair and got to watch everyone else work. And that was, oh, wow. I think, the first scene that we all shot. It was definitely the first scene I shot. But I think it was the first scene that everybody shot. And just like watching the interactions and everybody's playing and it's like everybody's new to each other and Paula's wiggle, like, it was, that was, that was a really fun scene. Don't underscore Although, you're sitting still because that's hard. That was very hard for me. So that was extremely hard. I don't know if you've seen me, but <laughs> sitting still was a very, it was a very hard challenge. And um, sitting still like a, a nice proper lady. I yeah, know. <laughs> Clearly, that doesn't come naturally. <laughs> um, I think I cut you off. What were you gonna say though? You oh, said, and I was gonna say I did a day of stunts and lichen work, and that was awesome too. Woo! I was very jealous when I heard you got to be a lichen. Yeah. Like, how cool would that be? Yeah. They're like, hey, so cool. you get to be a lichen and just go crazy and attack and eat people and destroy them. And did right. you get to eat? Uh, Ethan's fingers, or was yeah, that me? That was not me. Ah, uh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Maybe next time we can eat some fingers. So. Shucks. <laughs> I look forward to the day. <laughs> and keeping Ethan close to me. He'd leave his fingers alone. <laughs> 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 
uh, switching gears a little bit. I want to talk Good about. Good luck with that, James. Good luck with that. I'm not segue. I'm eating fingers. Or maybe this does segue. So I want to know about uh, what what your connection to the horror genre is. Like what your favorite horror films are, and horror experiences, and all that kind of stuff, and what and how you brought that to these roles. I feel like Katie's dying to speak right now. Oh, I'm like, should like, I start? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I'm like, it's so many to choose from. Um, I, I grew up in a Halloween family. Like, that right. was the, the biggest uh, holiday. I mean, we my parents were haunted porches. Like, oh, so great. like, the kids in the neighborhood knew if you were coming to our house to get to the candy, you had to go through the haunted porch. Oh, you had to earn it, huh? With it. Like, you had to earn that candy. Um, and we were all about, we really wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> had to make our own costumes and things. So that's, oh, that's how great. I started, was making my own costumes, doing my own makeup. And that because of that, created characters. Mm -hmm. So that's how I really fell in love with the idea of zombies and possessed. And I never really got the chance to play those type of characters. So when you know the audition for this came around, I was really excited, and I just got to pull in all these horror, like you know, the Exorcist, of course. I mean, you can't tell me you look at possessed me and don't think of spinning heads and puking peas. <laughs> like she's she's a bit much. Um, so for me in particular, definitely the Exorcist, but for me uh, growing up. I mean, I'm all about the classics. I appreciate the new ones and what they try to do. Sure. I am all about the classics. I love Friday the 13th. I'm from Crystal Lake. I heard a woo. Yeah! All right, let's hear it. <laughs> so I'm from Crystal Lake, so I hold up very proud. Um, I love my Jason Voorhees. Um, Freddie terrified my dreams for years. Chucky made me apologize to my dolls for years. You have to hear the story. In the bed with me. I was like, what were you tell, doing tell with your the dolls? Story. Oh, so okay. So I was way too young and somehow saw child's play. I don't I feel like this happens to everybody. Cable but TV, yep. exactly. Yep. They just put that on there and they don't they don't hide things. They they show it all. Mm -hmm. So of course I'm way too young. I'm terrified of dolls now and I have tons of dolls and stuffed animals. And of course I was afraid they were all going to murder me if I wasn't nice to them. So I would rotate them in my bed as a child, and I'd have them in my bed with me, and the ones that were in the closet, I would apologize to and let them know wow. that tomorrow night, they'd be in the bed. So I'd rotate them so none of them would kill me. Well, you learned a lot of manners from Harris. I really like. did. <laughs> you know, be polite, and maybe you won't get killed. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll but see. Yeah. That's not a promise. That's just a suggestion. <laughs> just a suggestion. <laughs> it's not a rule of horror. No. Definitely not. <laughs> All right. Go ahead over to Andy. Oh boy. Um, okay. So I did not grow up in the horror genre. I am like the exact opposite of Katie here. Um, Ernest Scared Stupid gave me nightmares. <laughs> wow. Nice. Shout out to Ernest Scared Stupid. Let's hear it. Not a big okay. So I was, uh, I, I actively avoided horror for a very long time um, because of that and, and was just terrified. I have an overactive imagination. Um, I, I believe the trailer for ha Haunted Hill, I think, also gave me nightmares. The trailer! Oh. <laughs> and I couldn't sleep for three nights. But um, then I started doing creature work and, you know, if you don't know the genre, like, what, what are you going to do, right? So I started watching horror with the sound off. <laughs> baby steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. Take me baby steps. And then I would rewatch them with the sound on, being like, okay, I know where the jump scare is now. I can do it. I can do it. Um, and now I just love it. Now, now I'm, I'm in. I'm totally in. What would you say now that you're in is your favorite? Um, I'm, I'm a really big fan of the psychological horror. So you know, I really love to mother. And, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll go with that one. I love The Conjuring, too. Woo. Conjuring, yes. That was it, that was it. What else, what else? Um, <laughs> this, I loved the original Dracula, too. Yeah. Kind of old school. No, I, I'm with you there. Yeah. Wait, wait, like Keanu Reeves old school? <laughs> Bram Stroker's Dracula? Come on. 
Keanu fans. Yeah. <laughs> classic. <laughs> Bella Lugosi. Definitely classic. Ah, uh, nice, nice. You're talking <laughs> super old school. Yeah, I'm talking classic. Yeah, when you said classic, I didn't know we're classic. Everyone has their own definition of yeah. classic, for sure. <laughs> well, I feel like because Bela Lugosi was so iconic, yes. that watching Dracula after the, icon the uh, iconicness, that's probably not a word, uh, <laughs> has already been established to be like, oh, that's where that came from, and oh, wow, this was all fresh and new for him, you know? Like, mm -hmm. these... These images and these poses were authentic and the first time for him. And now they're used like everywhere. And that's, yeah. that was really cool. He created, he created part of the genre, really. Yeah, yeah. and the same feeling about Psycho. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. Like, wow, yeah, this was, this was new. That's you interesting. invented this. That's an interesting point because a lot of us grew up watching the uh, the imitations of <laughs> Bela Lugosi <laughs> and all those classic performances, and then when you actually go back and watch it, I never really thought about that. Yeah. This is this is where this started. Right. With the mannerisms and mm -hmm. the accents and all that kind of fun stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Becca. <laughs> See, James, when I heard you make that statement, what I heard was, "When were you first scarred in your life?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I remember well. I'm glad you could read through the lines. Yeah, right. <laughs> I remember well. I was third grade. Um, but I also want to remind me, because I want to say what my favorite is in a minute, because it goes along your lines. But okay, so third grade, girls' slumber party. And, uh, you know, third grade, you know, and I was a little young for my age, I think, as well. I was like a year younger. And uh, it was a sleepover, right? So we were watching movies, and I why the parents would allow this, but Exorcist was the movie. It's a movie for all the kids. So, that, that'll scar you. Literally, all these little girls, and they're in like onesie pajamas and little matching pink and white sets, and like all this stuff. And I'm literally all the it starts getting crazy up in there, and they're all running around, start screaming, and this is me the whole time. The entire they left the room. This is me. <laughs> I was waiting for you to do a 360 with the head there. <laughs> I was like, you got some plan that you know about? I was mesmerized, but terrified, and I was horrified. I didn't know what was going on, and so I just didn't move. I was like, it's so immersed in it, but like, not okay either. <laughs> Third grade. And so, like, watch them, and they took off. I mean, I was the only one in that, alone in that room, which is even scarier. So afterward, I called my mom, this is like, 11, 12 o'clock at night. Like, mom, so what um what happens when a girl puts a cross up in her and like with her head goes and she's like, what are you watching? I'm sure by sure on a really special episode, huh? I was like, let me talk to her mother right now. I'm like, Thompson, you ratted your friends out? I didn't I really didn't know what was going on. I didn't think it was a I mean her parents let me, so I was like in I was like, what does this mean and why did she do that? And she was like, there was a priest there and like Tell me about this, you know? This just goes to show how nice of a kid you must have been. <laughs> that definitely would not have been my reaction. It's like, oh, we're getting away with something. <laughs> like, ha! <laughs> <laughs> like, you can see that me and I as children. <laughs> She'd be like, come to the dark side, Becca. Come to the dark side. <laughs> um, but my we'll mom, get you. We'll get you. We'll get you. I think we're already there. I <laughs> reacted yeah, with you for days. <laughs> um, but as a kid, so my mom would watch American movie classics. And so, um, Papa, my grandfather, would watch westerns, and so I had a unique upbringing of, of film and television. Um, but, so Hitchcock, to me, oh, speaks, nice. yeah. that's just like, my go-to. I mean, I love like, everything from, you know, everything you've mentioned, but like everything from like Sons of Lambs, because I like psychological, and um, like even Quiet Place has like kind of a horror thriller element to it. Be careful, it might leak. <laughs> sure, it went on the ground. I trusted mine repeatedly, it just kept going. Um, but Hitchcock, like, I also saw Birds and Psycho when I was a kid. So Psycho was it's probably still gonna always be my all-time favorite, but man, I still don't like Birds. Like, I, I, you know, I was a little child. I was probably like, you know, six, five, six, seven years old, and I, every now and then I still see a bird, and I'd be like, oh, oh no, it's, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. 
There's something about these, these little creatures that, you know, coming in from above, you can't escape them. Yeah, and they poke out your eyes and you're blind. It's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just think there's power in his black and white cinematography, and there's just like this eeriness to it. It's like an understated eeriness. It doesn't have to be like bold and in your face. It's that creepy essence that's right there behind you. That you can feel it coming and all of a sudden you have no sight. Because you're poked out like this. <laughs> I'm not joining in on this. <laughs> I was like, we have an alter. I feel like that's all like just right here, ready to go at all times. It's like right out in the corner of your mind, ready to go. So at the, the end, we're all surround, you know, yeah. surround you. You said you want to surround sound. Yes. <laughs> I did ask <laughs> uh. Oh boy. So where is haunted attractions? So I got to ask about haunted attractions. Uh, uh, are you guys into going to check those out? And uh, what's some of your favorites that you've done? I'll let you guys go. <laughs> Would you like to start, Andy? Do you mean like haunted attractions here or in general? What was it? You said what? Do you mean like haunted attractions here or oh, in, in general? Oh, in general, anywhere. Um, I didn't mean to play on the spot. So. Um, actually, I would say. Uh, I really enjoy the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. The hayride. But that's partially because two years ago I worked it. And if anybody oh, was right. there two years ago and you saw the woman uh, in white who jumped off the cliff, that was me. Oh boy, hey. yeah. there's something over there. That's awesome. <laughs> Becca? I, well, I'm from Ohio, and so we have lots of fields and corn. Oh, boy. And so, yeah. like, whether it's in the Halloween, it's just like, hello, come to a corn maze and be scared out of your pants, right? So, um, yeah, I just, I love, I love my, my hometown, Cincinnati area, and I love, like, I grew up, like, north of there, so there's a lot of, a lot of, like, uh, hayride type uh, corn maze options. And so haunted corn mazes are pretty dope. But they're hard to get out of in the dark, I've learned, and so I've actually been lost yeah. in them for hours before. Wow, that sounds like a nightmare. Wow. That's why you're scared the whole time. I'm like, get me out. That's why you bring a friend and you go on each other's shoulders, like, well, you're turn, okay, okay, come down. Go. We all don't have a husband who's seven feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, that Justin, you're gonna be my buddy, right? right? <laughs> Pimping him out <laughs> for, for haunted mazes. Rent him out. Um, rent him out. Very lucrative business. <laughs> <laughs> little side hustle there for you. Um, <laughs> I'm also I'm from a well Crystal Lake, so a little town outside Chicago and Illinois. So the Midwest, I mean, great. Like the Midwest, just, there's something about it. They just know how to do haunted houses, haunted mazes, like all of it. Um, I do remember moving out to LA and going to a couple of haunted houses and like um, the Universal Haunted. And I, they were fun, but I wasn't as scared. And I was really? trying to figure out why. And I realized, I think part of it is when I was younger, you could get away with a lot more in haunted houses. So I more grew up. More extreme in your uh, local like, ones, huh? Yeah, <laughs> like I grew up going to haunted houses that they could separate you, it was pitch black, the floor moved, people grabbed you, people moved, like you thought your friend was still holding you, you get to a room and realize that is not your friend right. behind you. <laughs> so I grew up with these things that just scared the crap out of me. And then coming here, like the one, most of the ones I've seen, I feel like they can't really touch you anymore and the lights can't be as dark, they have to have some light so you don't hurt yourself. So. I think that's a little bit of the difference that I found with haunted houses, at least. Well, well Katie, I got some great news for you. What? All of those kind of haunts do exist in Los Angeles. Oh, really? Good. Good. Because like, I've only been to a few. Well, I'm with you, Katie, because so, I've done like, USS Nightmare, for example. It, the, the one here, it, it was like, it was cool. Yeah. But it's like the same thing. It's like, it's not the, you know. As I want that scary scary dark. Now, I don't Apparently, want Apparently, James has the hookup. I know, I gotta get this list. I'm coming to you for a list for All this right. Halloween. We'll have a line after, we'll sign prints after, and James will be the information booth after. Yeah. <laughs> Just come to one or the other. And yeah, I'll, I'll let you know about all the tree haunts. We'll have you helping us. I'm, I'm not going, but <laughs> I'll tell you guys where to go. Uh, so I think that Resident Evil Village would be an amazing 
maze at Halloween Horror Nights. I agree. Now let's hear for that. That's a great idea. I'm just putting that out there in the universe. <laughs> I have heard that from people, and I'm like, Capcom gods, listen to us. <laughs> This is what we'd like. I would <laughs> like I would like that, and I would also like a Resident Evil Lego game. Oh, that would be fun. <laughs> That'd be sweet. Well, there has been precedent because in uh, Hollywood Horror Nights Orlando uh, 2013, they had a Resident Evil maze there. It was Escape from Raccoon City. So I don't know who you guys have to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's you guys. I know. Well, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So let's start at Twitter. Uh, I'll take names at this information booth after I give you a lot of discussion. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, you know, we three have been uh, interfacing, a lot of interfacing, a lot of fans this weekend, uh, and also have been uh, live streams, and we're very active with the fans. So I'm curious, uh, some memorable uh, fan interactions, uh, reactions to the game. That, that come to mind. You can start, Katie. Yeah, oh god, all of it. I just, again, want to thank everyone. Everybody here, everybody online, the, the RE fan base, I call it the RE family. Everybody is in the RE family. It is incredible. It's the greatest group. Um, this is the first thing like this I've ever done, so it was very new to me. And how welcoming everyone is, how nice and kind to each other, to us. It's been absolutely incredible. But legit, um, when the game first came out, I think I had just started a Twitter and somebody had posted something very nice just about the character of Mia. And my husband was driving and he looked over and he's like, are you okay? Because I was legit getting teary-eyed. Oh, wow. Because I just had never received um, something for something like I had done and worked on and the whole reason I got into acting was to give to other people. The whole idea of acting to me was that I want to give something where if people want to step away from their lives for an hour, for two hours, for 15 minutes, I want to help them do that. I know the world's crazy, life can be insane, sure. um, and to be able to be a part of creating something where people go, I'm choosing, like, I just want to enjoy something. I want to do this. I want to step away. Yeah, I just want to check out for Yes, a yeah. and to be able to do that, and this was the first thing I've ever done that I actually really got to see that people are doing that. People thanking us, saying they were having a hard time in life, and the wow. game helped them through it, the different characters, us talking online to them. So the fact that everybody's been so open with us and makes us comfortable being open with them has just been beyond inspiring, and yeah. I've just been so grateful for all of it. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, let's hear it. For yourselves. For your support. It's awesome. I actually got into acting for a similar reason, um, and that is kind of, you know, like the dream is to be able to reach people. So I, to reach people on a level that my mere words could not. Like when I talk, you know, as Becca, you know, people may listen, my friends may listen, my family may listen, but when I am communicating in a video game or a film or a TV show, it's people connect a story. So the words yeah. I'm saying by the writers are more compelling because they've had this whole backlog of characters and themes and they've you know, pulled you in with the content. And, and so it communicates on a deeper narrative, a deeper level. So to make someone laugh, cry, jump, um, giggle, feel, feel challenged by the message, um, you know, make them think about someone or themselves in a different way. Open somebody up to something or to challenge thought and make them grow and learn or just burst out laughing and have a break from life. Like, you know, and bring joy back into their heart. Like, whatever that is, to connect with somebody on that level is a way to bring heart, life, joy, and spirit to them. So that's what we love to do as actors. And, um, what is that? We all knew Resident Evil, like we got cast, we're like, yeah, well, actually we didn't even know the tape break what we had originally. We're like, I wonder what game this is. <laughs> we really didn't know still. 
Um, but once you figured out it's Resident Evil, we're like, whoa, this is amazing, this is so dope, this is Resident Evil. Um, and we, so we knew people would be a fan of it. We had no idea it would be the top grossing game in a 25 year history. And we had no idea it would, the fandom would blow up like this and the game would sell so well, or how amazing you would be. Um, I think we all have like a fan base. Um, like, is it Donna's Dolls? And then you have the villagers. Oh, you have like, your individual fan clubs. Yeah, and okay. I have Bela's little ones. Because one of my lines is right over there. So the fan club is here. Right. right. So it, one of the lines is, you know, where are you going, little one? So they're the little ones, Bela's little ones, right? And so. And then, so we do signings um, on streamily.com. We do signings. You'll have um, prints that we sell, and so people have you know, joined us on on ch our chats, on our streams, and so they will write in the most amazing things. And I've talked with people, got my signing a print, and all of a sudden so and so is writing, and I'm like, okay, drop in the pen. What? Um, my somebody has. I've, I have cancer. I'm getting tested again tomorrow. I was in remission, and uh, you know, I, wow. I'm getting tested. Can you can you pray for me? I'm like, yeah, I'm totally gonna pray for you. And I actually have prayed actually on the stream before. I've had people say, oh, my my dad just died, you know, and so I like will stop and start talking to that person. Um, you know, I'm going through. I've had so many people say I'm going through major depression. I've had suicidal thoughts. Um, so it's just been amazing the openness of the community and how real and authentic people are being and um, how much it's touched me that they're allowing us into their lives and so for us to be able to speak into your lives and talk to you and be a community with you it's like the family you've referred to that's that moves me to no end and you guys have been so brilliant to us like so loving so generous we have been it was a mind blow uh, to be able to be in the game, and then you guys took it way to another level. It's like this has absolutely been the biggest career achievement of my life, and you guys have made it the most beautiful career achievement of my life. So we just want to thank you for how loving and generous you've been to us, because it's been amazing and incredible. And we love you all so much. Yeah. I gotta go after that. <laughs> you got this, you got this. Uh, you know, very, very similarly, um, did not expect anything from this. You know, um, I've worked on quite a few games, but nothing like Resident Evil, and, and never in a position where you would ever know that I worked on it. So, this has been quite an experience to be a part of this family, and you know, and I didn't understand. I so my voiceover coach when I was talking to her about it, and I was like, I don't know what's happening. All of these people know me now, and I don't know what's happening. <laughs> and you know, she said to me, she goes, "Isn't it funny how you never know the character until the game comes out?" And I was like, "What? This is." And I realized that again, like as myself, I only have so much that I can do, right? But on the platform of this game and after communicating with all of all of you and you know and, and hearing about the depression and the anxiety and knowing that those are things that I have dealt with my whole life as well. Um, I'm now in a position to do something that's more active and that has been huge for me to be able to say like I want to help raise money for this. I want to do you yeah. know I want to reach out to all of these people because the messages that I'm getting are I mean, there, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot, and uh, I just love, like, this has been such an incredible experience to be with all of, all of you, and I love you all. Um, and also, I would never have gotten through the game without my fans telling me where to go. <laughs> I think this all speaks to the fact that horror and the many ways that we can take it in, films, haunts, video games, is a place for a lot of people to deal with their own inner struggles and challenges, and I think the reaction that, that you all spoke about really uh, proves that point. <laughs> well, uh, 
that is about it for us. I mean, I feel like we're just getting started here. <laughs> but um, I do want to mention, uh, you can come meet our illustrious panel at their booth. And they have an exclusive print just for this event. With the three of them on there. So come by and uh, chat with them and get that exclusive print. So, uh, Let's just hear a big round of applause for our incredible performers from Resident Evil Village! Thank you! Can we have a round of applause for James for being so dope at this interview? Thank you very much. And again, just thank you so much for having us. This has been amazing, uh, and it's been so much fun. So thank you for reaching out, especially Midsummer Scream. Oh, yes. We sure. love it. This has been a blast, and I can't wait to go buy more merch. All and right, let's support all the <laughs> We're actually vendors. spending, I think, everything you've made. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the only problem with doing stuff like this. You're like, oh, yay, I made some money. Now I'm going to go spend it over on that. So, uh, it helps we feel you. It helps the spooky economy. I love it. <laughs> You know, it's family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.